In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your first sphere out of wire. You can see here that I have, have my spool of 18 gauge copper wire and my needle nose pliers with the cutting implement in the throat. You'll notice that these pliers also have a little spring in here and that makes the bounce back uh, very easy to use, more ergonomic than the ones that I showed you in the tool supply video. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin and pull out a length of wire from the spool. And people always ask me, how much should I pull out? And my sometimes annoying answer is, I'm not really sure. It's kind of a personal choice, but if you wanna make a sphere that is going to fit in the palm of your hand, uh, so about the size of a tangerine or a small orange, I would say start off with something that feels comfortable, about a foot to two feet. You don't want it so long that it's hard to keep track of. And then I'm going to use the pliers to cut the wire. So you notice when I pull it off the spool, it wants to live in this circle because metal has uh, a memory to it and because it's lived in the spool, it wants to kind of stay in this circular shape. Um, that is the reason why I have you start with a sphere because believe it or not, it's one of the easier forms you can make. Um, and I always start this process by making what I call a fish hook. And what it does, whenever I begin, I make a fish hook so that I always have a little bit of slack so that when I bring the wire around to make the first circle of my sphere, I have a little bit of wire so that I can join things. Um, if you don't make the, the fish hook, then sometimes it's easy to forget that you need a little bit extra in order to close the form. So I give myself about a half an inch and I'm going to hold the wire in my non-dominant hand, my left hand, and I'm going to use the pliers to create a little V. Okay, so there you can see it. Um, and then I'm going to shape the wire into a circle or something resembling a circle. And then I'm going to tuck this end under the fish hook and cinch it up to the size I want. Okay, so this, you know, would be a larger orange. This is maybe more tangerine sized. Um, and then you'll figure out ways to hold the wire in your left hand or your non-dominant hand so that you can complete tasks with your other hand, with the pliers. And the reason why I want you to get used to using the pliers is that they are much stronger than the flesh of your hands. So if you try to do this with your fingers, you're going to find it very painful very quickly. Uh, the pliers are made out of steel. They give you more leverage. Um, they also have the little grippy things in the bed of the pliers. So trust me when I say that it's better to use the pliers. I'm going to grab the end of the fish hook and I'm going to pull it through. And before I do a complete rotation, I'm going to squeeze the wire. And the reason for that is that when you first pull it through, the two wires might have space between them, like the space between my fingers. And the objective in order to get a tight join is that you're going to get the wires to do this, snuggle up against one another. And I would Keep doing that, grab and pull, and then cinch. Grab and pull, and then cinch. And if you've got a really long fish hook, you can always just clip the end. But if it's short and it's just taking up a couple of rotations, you can just cinch it all the way around. You don't want to leave it sticking out because that can cut you later. Okay, so you'll notice that now I have, kind of looks more like a balloon rather than a circle. 
Um, so before I take any next steps, I want to remedy that. And the reason is that once you proceed with making a form, it's going to be harder to go back and correct how it is shaped. So just move the wire through your fingers until it resembles something more like a circle. Your next step is going to be grabbing the long end of the wire and pulling it out about 90 degrees. And using the pliers, you can get a nice sharp corner. Okay, so I'm ready for my next join. Uh, it's going to be advantageous to secure the wire down here at the bottom um, before you bring it all the way around. You can do that in one of two ways. I'm going to show you how to do it using the, the wire that I'm working with. Otherwise, you could bring this all the way around, secure the wire at the top, and then go back and use the finer wire, your 24, 26, or 28 gauge copper wire, and just kind of tie it into place at the bottom. But I will show you how to do, do it with the wire that I'm using by itself. Before I do that though, I want to make sure that I'm going to make a sphere and not some other kind of form, because that's what I'm asking for. So can you see the difference between this or this, right? This is too short compared to these two arcs. This is too tall compared to these two arcs. This is easy for you to see in the camera because of the way the the filming works but when you hold your wire form in front of you the way to check the height of these arcs is by shutting one of your eyes and that helps to flatten everything so every time you make a move just kind of compare the heights of the wire to one another the other thing that shutting one eye will do will tell you is my south pole just below my north pole okay so you want to line those up and that will also help you make something that is spherical i'm going to use my pliers again to hold what i know is more or less hopefully correct proportions and then i'm going to grab the wire and just put a little kink in it. And that way, if I need to let go, I know that this is where the bend, the join for the bottom, the south pole, uh, needs to happen, okay? So it's always advantageous to kind of put in these little markers. So again, holding with my left hand, and I'm going to send the long end of the wire through to initiate the second join. Sometimes the pliers aren't handy for everything. <laughs> okay. So again, squeeze. And squeeze. Okay. Before I do anything else, I just want to double check 
Is it on opposite sides of the circle? Are they more or less even? Things look good. Okay, then I can proceed to making the second side of my sphere. There's a little wave in the in the wire right there, so I'm going to use the pliers and straighten it out. Again, these are things that are sometimes better done with the pliers rather than your fingers. Again, before I proceed, is it too tall, too short, or just right? Sounds like the story of Goldilocks. Okay, so I'm going to grab just below that intersection, put a bend in the wire. And that way I can let go, get things lined up again Send the tail through. And start to join it up. This is 18 gauge wire. And I will tell you that if you are really struggling with this, your first sphere, your first of maybe many, um, try, try 20 gauge. It really can make a world of difference just stepping down the size of the wire. So here I've got a lot of tail left over. Is this secure? Yes, it is. What do I want to do here? Do I want to cut it? Yes, I could. Um, I could, however, make yet another ring. And if I wanted to make it six hoops, I'm sorry, three hoops that come together and make six lines of longitude all together, then I could squeeze these so that they come a little bit closer together. And then, will I have enough? I'm not sure. Eee, probably just short of it, of course. <laughs> but you'll get a more spherical looking form if you have more than two hoops coming together. I would say that um, that's a goal. So your first one, maybe just try to intersect two hoops and then for another attempt at the sphere, maybe you try three. So again, I'm going to mark my place. And squeeze and squeeze. Yeah, and wouldn't you know it? I'm just short. So, what do you do with this? Well, <laughs> you could get creative. Maybe that, maybe that sixth uh, line of longitude is not complete. Maybe I cut it here. Maybe I bend it. Um, 
and I can have an incomplete line of, of uh, longitude. So here again, mark my spot in the wire, and then pull it through. And squeeze and squeeze and trim <laughs> when you trim those ends just try to point point the pliers down so that you don't blind yourself All right, and there you have it. I'm getting a little bit of movement here with these two. Um, sometimes you can just squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and it doesn't make a difference. Um, a little dot of glue will stabilize everything. It's not going to stay put. Good enough. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. Um, definitely not perfectly spaced. This, this one ended up being quite long. Uh, but practice, right? Practice makes perfect. There you have it.